So I'll start to introduce the speaker then. Uh, so first, thank you everybody here for being so early to this talk. You must be very motivated to listen to Franciszek Apfelbeck. Uh, he is uh, originally from the Czech Republic and is a biotechnologist uh, by education and training. He is one of the co-founders of the Food Hacking Base and his main, main field of uh, specialization is uh, fermentation of food and drinks. Uh, so please give a warm welcome to Franciszek Apfelbeck and the stage is yours. Thank you. Pam, pam. Okay. <coughs> Just testing. Wait, I'll make the table. Okay, so we can start. Uh, thank you for coming so early. I usually start my morning breakfast shifts at 6.30, so I think not so bad. Uh, today we will be talking about the fermentation mobile. I will try to keep the presentation within 40 minutes, so we have 20 minute discussion after. Uh, if I get a bit too concentrated on something, which is quite easy for me, uh, I will see the signs and I will try to progress uh, continuously. Uh, I will tell a bit about myself first. Uh, after that, uh, we will talk, you know, about the more general kind of, you know, terms of what is this presentation about. And later on, we will kind of, you know, go through really the important parts, kind of, you know, step by step. And uh, as I said, we will be finishing the discussion. Uh, so, uh, my name is František Apfelbeck. In the computer world, I use Algoldor, so František Algoldor Apfelbeck. Uh, I am... Uh, from Czech Republic originally, but I don't live in my country of origin for more than 13 or 14 years. Uh, I kind of come and visit. I have been living in many different parts of the world and for now around eight years I focus professionally on uh, fermentation. Uh, I have been doing already fermentation before because I study in Czech Republic, Holland and Ireland uh, and I actually was my primary field was biotechnology, sorry, biology, the molecular biology or genetic engineering of plants, which I moved later on to the biotechnology, and actually my last project in Ireland was already about fermentation, but I was not very happy with the, the direction of science, and also the personal fit of myself into the field was not exact. So after discovering the uh, power of the Linux community uh, in our 2007, when I really dive in, and kind of start to participate and change my system. I left and travel around the world doing fermentation for now many years, trying to go through the open source, alternative, sustainable kind of, you know, uh, fields, uh, getting really involved in that type of uh, environment because it suits me much better, this community open source kind of model uh, than the corporate or government uh, framework which I have been involved before. Uh, so this is kind of a bit of my background. Uh, you probably know Noisebridge, one of the hackerspaces, actually uh, my first hackerspace where I was involved. Later on, I've been in uh, several other ones, like 091 Labs in Ireland, in Galway. I have been participating in Bermap. We have been, ma been making tours. So we've been in so Seabase, we have been in read in many different places, uh, which I really appreciate. Uh, so this would be kind of that part of the, my activities with the hackers. So fermentation, going around the world and learning. Uh, in the last, let's say, several years, I am more and more uh, focused really on fermentation in a view that I'm trying to also make my living from it. Uh, because if you cannot make uh, your living from something, uh, you have to do your living from something else. And this presentation is about how to be able uh, to get resources which you need for your life, in my case, uh, through fermentation, as efficiently as possible. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, I do fermentation uh, professionally, meaning I'm really trying to get my living from that for more than eight years. And I'm still not as stable as I would like to, partly because I was traveling a lot. So I've been in different places like California, I was in uh, Asia, Western Europe, etc. So with the change is more difficult. But there are also other things and uh, I would say fun fundamental things which are actually making uh, it more complicated for the people who would like to do something with the food and drinks 
to become really professionalized in a way that they can cover the cost of living. So this presentation will be about how to improve this and make this chance to do in your life what you want more efficient. So now, uh, fermentation mobile. I kind of uh, uh, try to combine three different fields uh, which I believe are really kind of, you know, circling around or kind of, you know, integrating. Uh, the first one is fermentation. Uh, the fermentation is at the core of the activities because that's what I focus on. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's making beer or cider or if you make kimchi, uh, cheese, you know, it's, you know, like, you know, fermentation by itself. Uh, fermentation is not now becoming very popular in the Western countries. It was, uh, I wouldn't say exactly wiped out, but considerably uh, decrease in uh, its range and daily application uh, during the, let's say, 1890s and around that time, and later with industrialization, uh, sterilization, pasteurization, uh, introduction of these techniques. Uh, we still have some kind of, you know, pure culture ferments like, you know, beers, you know, and vines. Uh, but the traditional wild fermentation was more or less, you know, pushed out from the daily life. Now it's coming back. Uh, I am very happy for that. Uh, uh, there are different concepts which you should be aware of. Uh, you already uh, probably know slow food, so very high uh, quality food, you know, from the point of view of processing. You, I'm sure, know uh, bio or organic food, so really low or like, uh, say, as organic as possible, not using uh, substances which can hurt you. Uh, other things which uh, is very important, of course, and it comes with the distribution, is a fair trade. Uh, so uh, sharing in a way that you really kind of care about how do you actually, what you take and what you give. Uh, that would be one, con let's say three main concepts. Uh, for the fermented foods, uh, I would say really important is uh, trying to serve, for example, live foods. So drinks and foods which are still alive, you consume them and they still contribute by probiotic and prebiotic qualities to your body. Uh, so that would be like, you know, the main thing which are now being progressive in the fermentation. Uh, the second field, which uh, many of you are familiar because we are in a big hacker event, uh, is the food, drink and biohacking. Uh, the definition of uh, hacking of the food, bio and drinks, uh, it's a bit difficult because everybody has a different point of view. Uh, from my point of view is that you apply, uh, of course, that kind of, you know, really observing and curiosity kind of, you know, uh, approach to something what you are interested in, in this case, for example, food. And you try to do something with it which is new, but you try to understand how does it work. So you are really trying to kind of, you know, come up with something new using something what was there already before. And of course, applying things like the open source, you know, sharing, you know, uh, and this up to things which hackers are very, I would say, famous for and uh, which I am very happy to. Because for me, for example, the way how the hackers in a way and all this I know open source movement changed the world of software and hardware in the last few decades. It's amazing. If you imagine like, you know, that there will be just a Microsoft in a way now compared to, you know, having a whole this community of open source Linux, like it's amazing. The sad thing is that in the fields of especially biotech, uh, the situation is very different. And this is one of the reasons why I definitely would like to ask and like uh, uh, galvanized, you know, or bring the help and integration of the hacker movement in this field because it's very important. People who are more interested in genetic engineering, etc., know how the things are going with Monsanto and others and there has to be some changes. So like, uh, it's important to hacking apply also on these fields. Now, the last field or like third field, let's say, uh, which I mentioned now, it's art. Uh, the art, uh, uh, it's of course hard to grab because like what is artistic, what is not. Uh, I see it uh, for me as a wonderful way how to bridge cultures, how to bring people together uh, in a way of like understanding the things from different perspectives. Uh, art many times, of course, uh, let's say of course, uh, the art many times uh, symbolizes something. So you really... Uh, come up with the new ideas. You can, for example, think about the, the peace symbols, you know, creation of the peace symbol, like something what is kind of 
seeing the things from different point of view. Uh, the other thing which is very important for me with the art is that it gives you a personal space for expression. Uh, so you can do things some certain way which you like and it's okay. You find yourself, you know, through the art. So if you combine uh, these three things, I will go to the next one. Uh, in kind of, you know, imagine kind of, you know, structure, uh, you will have a system uh, where the fermentation by itself, uh, you try to understand them better. Uh, you do, first of all, the fermentation, that's a fermentation field. You try to understand them better from the point of view how they work, both the dynamical and statistic kind of, you know, you know uh, uh, point of view. Uh, you try to combine it uh, with the art, uh, wrapping it all together in a form where you can come out with a new technologies, uh, especially, for example, applied technologies based on the models of really properly kind of observed environment, so you know how this ferment works, you apply to, for example, pilot or small to medium production, and uh, you manage to wrap it all together in a way which you can uh, quite easily share with the people around the world. Of course, all of that properly documented, that's very important. Now, this presentation, like I have a phrase here because like there are several things, you know, which I, are quite important and we will go through that in the next slides. So we'll focus on the art of fermentation done by hackers using a dynamic mobile concepts to create also static with practical demonstration at this event and especially after. So what does it actually mean? Uh, one more kind of, you know, study. Uh, the fermentation mobile uh, aims to build up uh, stable fermentation communities which can support uh, themselves and the people who are doing the activities in them. And it's done in a way that it tries to minimize uh, the time uh, of setting up this kind of first procedure, you know, uh, first uh, phase of you know doing something, uh, starting something is generally very challenging uh, because you don't have too many resources. Uh, so this talk is about how to make it more efficiently so you can get to the stage where you are actually really sustainable faster. Uh, it's combining uh, the integration into the current legal framework uh, with also mobile approach because uh, you need at the beginning also some resources from outside because you don't have them, let's say, in the community where you are starting. It's not fermentized enough yet. Again, it will be mentioned in the presentation. So it's combining the mobile approach about getting resources from other places too to be able to like, overbridge this first period. And it facilitates, of course, by that collaboration by the communities because if you come to different places and you promote what you do while well, you are getting some resources for yourself and for your community but you're also giving something back to the community which is hosting which is very important so just the now let's say go through the step by step uh, so legalization of classic profession uh, the ones who don't know classic is one of the words which i use you can use fermentizer brewer they are different words person who is doing doing fermentation Kvas is ancient word for uh, ferment in, uh, I think, Norwegian, la like Nordic languages, in uh, Slavic languages for sure too. And it's supposed to come uh, from the kind of uh, the pantheon of the north. Uh, it was a being which was, was actually traveling the world and sharing the knowledge and experience. Later on, it was, uh, the being was killed, and from the blood of uh, the of the kvasir uh, was uh, it was created into the meat, so which is you know the I would say ambrosia of the of the artist and etc. So it's I think really nice you know uh, mythology. The word is being still used very often. Kvas is one of the most famous Russian beverages, fermented. Kvas in Czech means basically anything what is fermenting. So I think kvas here, kvas here in Czech, it's a nice word which I like to use. Uh, so you get the professionalization, uh, sustainability, rich faster, we said that. Uh, leader production educational activities, uh, this is going to be something what we talk quite a bit about. Uh, income. That's a key and insurance. These are the main stop. The, let's say main topics. Now, f why fermentation mobile? Uh, the fermentation mobile. Just to in a few sentences, so you 
I understand the practical concept uh, before we go through the theory. In a way, it's uh, as cheap as possible a way how to establish legal education and production center for fermentation. Uh, you can imagine easily food track or food trailer, fermentation trailer, uh, where you have legally uh, established facility. It may be small, doesn't matter so much at the beginning, but you can do your activities legally. So this is what we are going to be talking about, how to do this so you can actually do what you love and being able to get your resources more easily from that. Now, uh, this is something what I do for many years and I always had the issue of getting what I do out and being able to ask legally people to support me. It doesn't matter if it's education, it doesn't matter you know, if it's production. It's always an issue because of many hygienic and safety laws. So this is actually something what is very important uh, because without that, uh, you are always in that kind of shadow economy. Uh, you cannot go for the bigger events. Uh, you cannot, uh, for example, make uh, drinks and food and beverages and get it out you know, for some donations. You are very limited. Uh, the idea is that this, when you want to start the fermentation, you generally start in some community. So starting up is a challenge. Uh, if you come somewhere, you don't have too many resources. Uh, you need cost, uh, to cover your cost of living, and you need uh, to be active somewhere. You need some place for the fermentation. Uh, as you see, the fragile economy, uh, sorry, the fragile community means the community is not fermentized yet. People don't know you, they ferment a bit or don't. Uh, you need some time to kind of, you know, really get them in. I call it fermentized because you know, this is actually what you really do, like, you know, uh, getting the people in and making the thing happen. Uh, however, uh, and the thing is that uh, uh, to be able to do it efficiently, you, of course, need to cover kind of, you know, your living costs, otherwise you cannot do it easily. You have to do work part-times, you kind of, you know, will be in trouble. It's kind of classical catch-42. Uh, so, uh, at the beginning, for example, buying the buying some place or renting the place where you could do your activities long term, it's very difficult uh, because you don't have resources for that. Uh, therefore, uh, some big investments, you know, like you're borrowing money from the bank, you know, trying to invest, you know, really and getting spot, uh, it's not likely because you don't have generally too much history and you do not have also support of the community which doesn't exist yet. So the beginnings, uh, in a very simple words, are difficult. Now, you of course can do things uh, which will help you to succeed. Uh, the community build up uh, pays long term. Uh, if you start to do regular events, which are somewhere around here, regular events build up community. On Tuesday, we do fermentation evenings in Normandy, Cherbourg, where I am uh, based now in, uh, uh, in uh, La Cherche, uh, artistic community. Every Tuesday, we do fermentation evening. Uh, every last Saturday of the month, we do fermentation day, which is open to the community. So the first weekly event, like you do probably a lot in your hackerspaces, brings people in who are really into it, the core group which, has doing, which is doing fermentation. And you keep in touch, you do new things. Come to the Furekin base, we have several ferments which we have done during the last months preparing for this event uh, and taste them, of course. Uh, the monthly event bring people in from more, I would say, wider society. From my point of view, great way for promotion and getting resources for what you do. Because if you need to buy your few hundred uh, euros worth of ingredients for the beer making, sugars, you know, for the brewing, you know, probiotic drinks, you don't want to buy, uh, pay it all the time by yourself. You need to get the money from someone one generally who like that and who wants to support you. These monthly events are very good for that. So you, of course, invest lots of time and energy in that, trying to kind of get these resources, getting it more stable. Uh, and the thing is, uh, again, like all of these things, for example, now what we do in a way are illegal because we don't have a place and we, don't, we cannot do it really like, you know, really by the book. Now, when you are doing all these events and you try to publish it and like share it, they do the recipes, you know, some photo galleries, etc., you are building your fermentation history. Uh, this is very important uh, because uh, later on, uh, we will go through that, if you want later on to get uh, resources to establish yourself real long term, you can, 
use this, really this build up of kind of documentation and community very well to get more resources for activities. And it doesn't matter if it's you know, crowdsourcing or if it's some kind of government funds. There's, of course, a difference, but it will help you very much. But we will get into that. Now, uh, the last one, uh, <laughs> the kind of summarization of this. Uh, if you manage uh, to, if you have a chance to establish at the beginning for a minimal amount of money means that you can afford it a place which will allow you to do actually all of these activities legal. Well, that's very good for you because you have uh, many advantages uh, compared to doing all of this kind of, you know, somehow. And this somehow I know because I do it somehow for many, many years. Uh, so like, uh, it's a nice way to go. It's making the life uh, much more uh, easy in a way. Now, promotion activities and other activities, uh, sorry, communities. So, uh, the fermentation mobile, if you have a food trailer or fermentation trailer which allows you to do things legally, uh, you can use it to go out to get resources. You can go for the big events, for example, you know, in a way, in the future, we could be on even like this. A team of few people getting out, for example, a homemade or like a little small scale made beers, you know, uh, non-alcoholic drinks, you know, foods, you know, whatever. We could be here uh, making the same thing, uh, same conditions, for example, as uh, the food trucks and uh, getting the resources in. It's possible because you are legal. You are not legal. No. Uh, it's very difficult. Uh, you cannot be here, really. Uh, concerning uh, the exchange, of course, if you go to the places like, you know, hacker tours, you know, you go to the, uh, you do go for different, like, you know, Mm, uh, markets, for example. Again, it's a resource, income. Uh, Turing make you realize that this one is about more two, like two, three months. If you get your chance and you go around, like, you know, really traveling, uh, it's very nice, like, you know, I say, like, washing your head, cleaning your head, and uh, you meet lots of new people. You, of course, spread the knowledge very intensively. Turing it's kind of taking lots of energy, but it also kind of, you know, really galvanize, fermentize, you know, the communities. So it's something what I really like uh, for like two months tours, you know, three months tours, very nice thing to do. Of course, if you have a legal kind of, you know, base, you know, like it's, it's beautiful. And uh, now, uh, this is again the data. Uh, if you document all these activities, uh, uh, you will be able uh, to later on use it, uh, not only like uh, that you have a more like beautiful photos for your uh, presentations, you know, uh, but uh, if you do things uh, on a regular basis for a long term, uh, people remember. People remember it takes years, uh, but you get your social networks, you know, much stronger. And if you come back to the people, kind of, you know, you stay in touch, it really allows you to do things which are very hard to achieve uh, just by one big kind of, you know, bank, you know, and a few, met few months of, of effort. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, so, I definitely recommend uh, good documentation for the hackers. It's very important. Uh, it doesn't always happen, <laughs> kind of, but we are trying. Uh, so this is something that is important because really it will help you. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> yeah, this one is something that uh, is connected directly with fermentation, but it's now applied in many other fields too. Uh, if you produce uh, something that is fermented, it ge in generally uh, you are prolonging, uh, let's say, the digestibility of the product. Product fermentation is used to conserve, uh, to preserve uh, nutrition. Uh, the thing is, even then, it doesn't last forever. And uh, if you, of course, have uh, the legal status, you can sell it, which is great. You can get resources. Uh, but also, if you see that you have something too much, uh, you can decide, okay, uh, let's give it away. You know, give it to the non-profits, you know, like, you know, food no bombs, you know, to the local charities. If you are legal, you can do it. If you are not, uh, most likely you'll be not able to. So if you can do it legally, then actually you are much more likely to get closer to the, I would say, unachievable goal of zero waste. Uh, but you can do much better than we do now. And for me, this kind of, you know, uh, system of sharing and caring 
uh, compared to do compared to what is happening now around the world, you know, through the corporate structures, etc. It's very important. So, like it's something again, what helps you if you are able to do things properly, legal. Now, uh, the last one, I'm not a big fan of. Actually, I'm not fan at all. Insurance. Uh, <sighs> If you want to do fermentation, and I think in generally food and uh, drinks, uh, you need to be legal uh, and injured. If you are not legal, you can not be injured, which means you can be quite easily accused uh, through, you know, based on true facts or not. And uh, it can completely, I think, destroy what you are doing because uh, it can go really quickly quite wrong. Uh, so far, we have been very lucky in my activities. We had some incidents in the past, which happens, generally some explosions, uh, when people do not pay enough attention or it just, you know, like, uh, do, do mishandle things. Unfortunately, it happens. Uh, of course, you want to avoid any incidents. On the other hand, uh, it happens. So insurance, it's not something that I enjoy. I think it's very much misused by the people who have already loads of money. Uh, but uh, if you want to do a project of this type, you need it. Now, uh, how does it happen? Okay. So there are different steps. Uh, one more boring than the other, to be honest, uh, but uh, they have to be done. Uh, if I'm talking about legality, you have to get it somehow. Uh, imagine that food or fermentation trailer. How do you do it? Uh, first of all, you should think what are your options. Uh, we will mention the two major ones. Uh, it is education on profit, which I would recommend. Many hackerspaces have all the structures, so we are very familiar with that one. Uh, the second one, uh, it's some type of uh, small business. In France, for example, where I'm now based, it's called micro enterprise. It's an option like, you know, how you can get easily in and do your business kind of, you know, on a really like, small level. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, first of all, however, you check what is in your country the way. So what are the legal entities, you know, what uh, you can apply. And of course, like it depends what is the direction which you ta want to take because there are different possibilities. Or, well, you know, the really things that you want to do. More educational, more practical and production, you know, it's up to you. Uh, the laws. Uh, uh, well, uh, there are laws which you have to uh, at least consider that they are existing at the beginning of the application procedures. Uh, it's a very good idea to find out first what these laws are. Uh, if you have someone who can help you with that, very good because it's sometimes really messy. Uh, so really make sure that you know quite pretty well what is the legal framework in which you are operating. Uh, it is uh, mandatory if you want to get certified and get the stuff, you know, like that I am here, you know, in some certain shape which is recognized by the local and like uh, state authority, you have to go through that. Uh, do not underestimate it. Uh, it's a uh, kind of waste of time, but it has to be done. Uh, now, enforcement. Uh, that's the second stage. So you know the laws. Now, of course, you want to know how much they are enforced. Uh, like, do I have to really pay too much attention to, the, to that or not? Uh, what are the legal loops? Uh, even more important kind of uh, how to get your stuff done even like you know when the law is not exactly law is not exactly in your way uh, i know many examples uh, which kind of uh, show how much the reality and kind of the paper uh, is different or how it differs. Uh, I know, for example, when I was in Japan, in Kyushu, I volunteered in a very nice uh, place, uh, Omura, and my patron uh, with his wife, Japanese wife, and the guy was Canadian, uh, they have a very nice bakery, uh, also educational uh, institute for the kids, for English, and the organic garden, and their procedure of uh, certifying their bakery, organic bakery, was more or less that they kind of wrote down like kind of uh, what they plan to do, what is inside, make some basic plans, send it out, after they got it back, you know, with a stamp and they were certified. They have never ever seen someone coming, you know, with like checking, you know, all the kind of detailed things, you know, similar thing, you know, when I'm now, for example, in Normandy, uh, another friend uh, was uh, getting certified for uh, his production facility, small one, and it was more like a happening, you know, on the phone, you know, like, okay, do you have a proper ventilation system, you know, you know, system? Can you open the window? Yes, no problem. Done. 
You know, like, you know, like, you don't see anyone. So some things may look really hard, uh, but in reality, actually, people go quite straight around them, and it's okay. Some other things may be quite complicated, like, for example, if you have a fermentation room uh, for the beer, lager, etc., and you need to make sure that your removal of carbon dioxide is done properly, uh, there are places where they really insist on that it, you have it done well. If not, you will not get your license for doing what you want. So you have to be really, like, you know, well uh, informed. Now, people already in. Uh, this is uh, many times the key. Uh, for me, for example, because I would like to have something like the fermentation truck, let's say, uh, I go to the people who are doing all the food trucks in the place and I talk to them. And um, especially if you are not a future competition from their point of view, they can give you absolutely amazing info very quickly. You go for a few pints or a few dinners, you know, and you basically really get, you know, okay, get this trail, not that one, you know, apply this, you know, you know, times like, okay, it will take you two months, 5,000 euros. You get an enormous amount of practical information. Uh, which you should combine uh, with the more, I would say, uh, official uh, information. Uh, incubators and support centers. Uh, m most of the places this time in Western Europe, uh, they have something like incubators uh, for uh, supporting or promoting the local business kind of uh, activities. Some of them are non-profit, some of them are governmental based. Uh, they can be very handy uh, because they are able to do for you uh, by questioning actually government like you know taking you as a project uh, they can communicate with the government structures you know the hygiene you know safety etc uh, in your stat and especially if you are in a country where you are not origi originating from it's very important uh, however please keep in mind two things uh, they are generally uh, how to say uh, blue colors uh, so they don't have too much practical experience and they go by the book that's one thing. So always combine it with the info from the people who are actually doing the stuff, if you can, uh, and your experience, of course. And the second thing is uh, they are, at least in France, not exactly quick. So like my m last uh, demand on something was like in June or July, and the next meeting will be September. So it depends. It may be faster, but like, uh, do not expect exactly like a business style of efficiency. Uh... Things to uh, keep in mind, uh, laws change, uh, so what was uh, done before when you started may go in different direction, it may be harder. Uh, generally, the laws do not change for better, concerning like, you know, how flexible you can be in your uh, uh, sloppiness when you prepare something. Uh, so keep an eye on this, generally if you are in, you are already certified, you should be quite all right. Tell somebody who has a similar setup like you, blows it up, you know, and they come and check you too. So, but once you are in, it should be all right. But keep in, keep in mind that, you know, things are changing. Uh, now, the certification. Uh, you generally want to, well, if you want to get uh, legal, you need to get legal for something. Uh, you want to produce something. Um, if you want to be kind of producer, because otherwise kind of you know the government body doesn't know what to do with you so you have to come with something uh, I recommend to choose of course some product uh, which is simple and which allows you uh, to get the certification as simple as possible uh, it doesn't have to it doesn't, doesn't mean that this product is the only thing which you do but it's kind of the opening it's kind of shield uh, simple product generally is the one which uh, is being done in that country already so it's certified and they know it so you can uh, reasonably well kind of you know link them or they can find uh, the connection to the kombucha which is already being prepared for five years in this location and has all the stamps uh, if you come with something new it's really sometimes very difficult to kind of do it with the government uh, so like you will have to go through it but try to avoid it as much as you can at the beginning of uh, your legal kind of you know uh, legal existence because it may fail like oh, you can make really get you know months and months of delays so try to get something simple of course having selection of fermented products which you know quite well how to do uh, so you can choose uh, the uh, the proper one it's very uh, handy because you can kind of, you know, adapt. And that you do another five or ten ferments later on, that should be no problem. That's a different story later. Now, no-nos. Uh, 
No nodes are things which you definitely do not put on your application form. Like, you know, meat, if you can avoid, like, at the beginning, just, you know, like, uh, no meat products, if you can. And uh, number two, like, I would say number one, alcohol. Uh, at the beginning, I would definitely, for one or two seasons, uh, try to recommend not to touch alcohol, even the low percentage one, like a cider or wine or beer. It is possible to do it, but it's always much more complicated on all the different, you know, all the different kind of, you know, levels. So that one I would recommend to get in a bit later on. So no nos are basically the things which you want to avoid if you want to live in a reasonable kind of you know uh, mind state you know during these procedures. Uh, education, non-profit, micro enterprise, and combine. So I was already saying that there are different types of legal entities. Uh, the most easy uh, is uh, the non-profit. You can set up very quickly, generally without one month, a minimal investment, if some at all. Uh, you need some people in, generally it has to be at least two or three people, kind of, so there is some structure. Um, so it's a very nice, uh, very easy accounting, you know, so lots of positives. Uh, one of the negatives, in a way, is that uh, you will have a problem to claim income or make income. You can make a profit in many of these structures, but you have to invest them back to the, you know, activity, uh, depending, of course, there are many different possibilities you know, which way exactly you go, but you will have a problem to really get uh, wages. So this is one of the issues. Of course, it's kind of up to you how much you claim. Like if you go for a market and you made there 300 euros, well, you know, like, you know, not all of the things are on the ticket, you know, so it's up to you how much you say you earn and you kind of really put to the tax. On the other hand, if we are talking about the, the really nice documentation of the project, like if you start to miss like 50% of the income, you know, it's starting to completely play with the numbers and it's get miss messy. So uh, be careful about this aspect of really getting money which you need to be able to do it so it supports your cost of living. Uh, micro enterprise. Uh, that's actually like a very nice uh, setup, which I don't try yet, but uh, some of my friends are going that way. Uh, within in France, uh, it costs around 200 euros and four to five days of training. Before it was for free and no training. Now we have a training. Uh, you are able after that to do business. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what is the income, like 40,000 euros or maybe 200,000 euros. It's quite pretty decent. You can do it and have your living from that. Uh, the thing is that uh, also uh, quite easy accounting. So that's uh, an advantage. So it's quite pretty simple still. Uh, I personally recommend to combine uh, because uh, if you make uh, two different structures, then you can actually really uh, pull the resources from different uh, sources and it's much more easy. I think it's a very nice uh, kind of way to go. Uh, also, with a non-profit, for example, in France, you should remember uh, that if you are in a direct competition with some business, uh, France has the type of laws which actually can cut you off, you know, because you are actually kind of, you know, uh, destroying their business, which is so important. So, of course, having the option of a four business, you know, entity uh, helps to avoid this problem. Now, uh, we will now talk about a little bit the thing. Uh, as you see, uh, I have the experience of doing the fermentation and I have experience with setting up the fermentation centers, but not the certified ones. Uh, so at the moment, uh, I am now preparing in my mind, you know, the mobile kind of, you know, fermentation center. Uh, and we will talk about some things which I believe really should be there. It's not very detailed. I will explain in a bit why. Uh, but it's kind of the beginning and I have the idea quite pretty good how it should look like. Now, multifunctional design. Uh, if you want to be able to do different ferments, uh, you should at least demonstrate that you can do it in this setup. Please realize, like most of the people who are doing food trucks and things like that, they do not do produce their things in the food truck. They have it in their uh, home kitchen, whatever, like setup, which is non-certified, and they use actually the fermentation or like you know the food truck uh, as a kind of yes, I do it here. There are two stainless sinks, so I fulfill the legal requirements. 
uh, so it's kind of you know cover. Uh, but it works, and generally the institutions let them be. Uh, however, still uh, you should be at least able to demonstrate that you can do that thing, like you know, that you can make that uh, kombucha or kimchi in this kind of thing. Because if you don't, then like you know, it's starting to be really a bit questionable. So you should be able to mimic at least a little bit. Uh, materials. Uh, so you have some design which kind of allows you to do different things. Uh, you have to, of course, you know, uh, make it happen. You have to construct it. Uh, in this case, uh, it's mobile center, so you want something what is, if possible, light. Of course, it has to be hygienically kind of, you know, reasonable, uh, not too expensive, reasonable to work with. Unfortunately, it's very hard to find these materials, which would be all great, you know, kind of, you know, cheap, abundant, you know, easy to work and perfect, hygienically safe. Uh, more or less, it uh, ends up, I think, with a steel construction and stainless on the top. Um, it's, I think, the best setup which you can get and quite reasonable. So that we the materials, of course, the weight is important. Uh, I will jump on that a bit, but the first prototype which I want to build uh, should be within 750 kilos because that's a legal requirement in EU for the trailer. And uh, if you want to have life, uh, you know, easy life with this, you want to try to keep it within the weight. If you go up, many things start to be complicated and you try at least for the beginning again to make it happen, you want it to have it simple. Like second generation, that can be different, but first one, simple. Uh, now, you have to think about the activities which you want to do in. Uh, the standard activities mean, okay, if I want to make kimchi, if you know what is kimchi, it's a fermented vegetable, lacto-fermented, uh, uh, which is done in Korea. Uh, you need to cut your onions, you can uh, you need to clean, you need to peel, you need to cut, uh, you need to bottle, etc. So you need some desk, for example, where you do it, which is stainless. You need uh, some refrigeration face, uh, place for your ferment, so they keep at optimal conditions which if, when you go for the events. Uh, you have your uh, experiment, uh, experiment incubator, uh, which we are developing with Techink, uh, which is actually keeping the ferments at optimal conditions, oscillating the temperature or not. Uh, you need some devices in. You have some standard activities, which you know you will be doing on a regular basis, especially if you do workshops or some events. Uh, and you will have some special activities, like you have special workshops, or like, you know, there's something very specific, you come and you want to make a glow with drinks. So, okay, that's a bit different setup, you know. Uh, if you want to make a workshop, for example, of course, I would like to be teaching. It's one of my really passions. So you come to the place and it'll be very nice if you can just get sight of the trailer out, cover the place so 10, pe 10, 15 people can actually do something even when it's raining around and your workshops happen with actually small kind of, you know, fully set up place with water, etc., electricity, supporting you, the fermentation mobile. So you have to go through this. Uh, now, the design and how to make it happen. Uh, it's very simple in a way. Uh, the resources are very limited. Uh, at the moment, I have moved back from uh, Korea or Asia, where I lived nearly for five years. So I'm establishing myself back in Europe. Uh, I have to be very careful about my resources because I'm still not as stable as I would like to. Uh, perfect, thank you. Uh, so. I suggest for this having a very basic design. Uh, it can be translated in a way that we have to do it in a way which is simple, so it can be done reasonably well. So not in you know, a multifunctional design is amazing, but it has to be still quite pretty simple to do. Uh, it has to be cheap. You know, like, you know, it has to be reasonably cost, so it doesn't go too far. Uh, we will be going through the cost in the budget very soon. Uh, Build a prototype. Uh, we are not uh, here to spend, uh, like, I'm not uh, aiming on spending like next half year or year or building the fermentation trailer and playing with every screw in it. Uh, I am after getting the fermentation trailer together and get it certified. And like these two things are actually very important together, you know, like so uh, concentrating too much on one and missing the other, that's uh, not a good idea. That's not what is this about. It can be in the future, but at the moment, it's really finding an easy way how to make this happen. Uh, in other words, there will be a plenty of space for improvements. I think that's the phrase which is being used. Uh, trailer option, already mentioned before, I have been considering many different setups. Uh, of course, food truck would be lovely. 
uh, but if you would like to have a food truck, you mean something what can move you around because it has already an engine. Uh, it's more expensive. Uh, food truck, a decent one, uh, I would say would be minimum six, seven thousand euros. After it's also some, you know, kind of, you know, adjustments. Uh, and you will have to pay insurance all the time. Also, if you would like to borrow the thing to someone, which would be great, you know, to another team which is going to, to do the tour or something, uh, it will be issued because of the insurance, etc. Uh, trailer has advantages that up to 750 kilos, it kind of near doesn't exist from the legal point of view. You don't have to pay the insurance in the meanwhile. Uh, it's much cheaper. You can get a trailer base for 500 euros or so and build it up if you like. Or you can get a trailer which is actually very suitable for your purposes within like 4,000 euros. It's possible. So like, you know, it's a different dimension of, you know, investment. Uh, that's the reason what I would like to go for. There's one limitation which is a bit nasty. 750 kilos is not too much. Uh, if you are supposed to uh, come for an event like this, and you would like to have with you at least, I would say, like you know, for example, a thousand liters of fermented drinks, an example. Uh, then, like you know, that's thousand kilos, and uh, your fermentation trailer by itself, without any kind of thing in, will probably be around 500 kilos. So at the moment, I'm trying to aim on uh, the weight limit that we will be, for example, around 500 kilos if possible, with the trailer having at least like 200 kilos, 300 kilos of the carrier capacity. But it's very clear that for big events, this is not sufficient. So just keep it in mind. This is one thing with a small, this kind of light and simple simple solution, this is a complication. Uh, oh yeah, I didn't click further. Now, timetable. Uh, there are last two or three slides. Uh, the timetable is, uh, it goes like this. Uh, crowdsourcing campaign like, uh, will be in September. Now I'm presenting and I'm going to be busy in the next few weeks uh, visiting my country of region, come back to Normandy. During September, I want to start to promote and crowdsource. Uh, the build-up uh, should be done latest around mid of October, meaning starting. And really, uh, if for me, if the crowdsourcing goes well, I would like to have the base for the trailer or the trailer as quickly as possible uh, and start to work on it. It will take at least a month and a half, I would say. Uh, I would say by the mid of November, it should be in a very final stages. Uh, it's possible, but it's going to be busy. Now, the certification. Uh, because of the Christmas and because of the fact that I'm in France, uh, like, you know, trying to certify anything, you know, within a month and a half or so, it's already deadly, but I think there is a chance. I will be honest, in the worst case, uh, it may take a little bit longer, but I really would like to do latest by the second half of November, start the certification procedures of the thing. The legal entity can be started already before, and it will have to be. Uh, the presentation. Uh, if all goes well, but I'm not I cannot predict yet, uh, concerning being allowed to, I would like to present the project on the 34C3 in Leipzig. Uh, however, in this case, it means I would like to have fermentation mobile there and really use it and show it. It will be demonstration, practical demonstration of the thing. Now, budget. Uh, I would say that within four to 5,000 euros, it is possible, uh, doable depending on the amount uh, of... Uh, uh, how to say, uh, time which I can spend on it, uh, plus how many people are going to help and how much people are really organized and they have the knowledge. Uh, with 6,000 euros, it's uh, quite uh, much more easy uh, because then I know that, for example, for 4,000, uh, I can buy actually or the prepared trailer and for one, let's say 1,000 euros, I can just very quickly adjust it. And for me at the beginning, I am fine not spending like, you know, half year of everyday labor on building the trailer. It's fine. Uh, now, uh, Two to, two to four thousand euros then in uh, materials, that's the estimate, and one thousand euros I ask for human time resources, most of it for me, that in the time, like for the three, four months, September, October, November, December, let's say, I can cover like things like my social insurance, healthcare, basic things which I have to pay, and um, I may have to also ask someone to help, so I may have to invest two, three hundred euros to guy who is going to do some really stainless steel job, which I don't know, things like that. I think within 1,000 euros it's possible, so around 5,000 euros budget for the crowdsourcing campaign as a minimum, four, five thousand, that's doable. Now, there are two pictures of me already doing what I would like to use, for example, the fermentation uh, center for. 
Uh, this is me in a Korean military uniform, which I got from the garbage in Korea, uh, doing uh, my first uh, or a second cider or first seasonal cider in Normandy. Uh, Crusher behind me, I'm very happy. Uh, it worked quite pretty well. Uh, by the way, for example, for this project, which I want to do again, local crop processing project, when I use different crops from around place, for example, my local village in uh, Kautna Šumavy in Czech Republic, I would be able, with this setup, to produce, for example, a full, uh, nice, organic, uh, fresh apple juice, pasteurize it if I like, I can make dried apples, and I can make packages, you know, if somebody would like to kind of, you know, later on contribute and buy it or get it for donation, I can do that legally. It would be very handy. But, for example, for this season, like 2017, no, no cider. I know that. But maybe for the you know, season 2018, if I get certified, it could be possible already to get for the cider, which is now being developed in my country. And I know that if I get into that, for example, it will be or it can be part of my uh, living earned through fermentation. So it's really like, you know, step by step. Uh, I would like to thank you for listening to me and coming uh, so early. Uh, there is uh, the link uh, to the fermentation mobile uh, on our wiki at Furek in Base. I really hope it's fermentation mobile, not fermentation mobile, because when I was putting the others in, I was of course disconnected. I have some issues with the network here. Uh, if you are interested and uh, you would like to get in touch, uh, please do so. Uh, the email is definitely correct. Uh, so write to me. Um, if you know someone who can be interested in this too, please uh, uh, share it. Uh, we are now at the end of my presentation time because I would like to dedicate 10, 15 minutes to the discussion. Uh, so once more, thanks. And I open the ground to discussion now. Thank you. Thank you, Franciszek. So, uh, anyone with any question can go for the microphones here or in the middle of the tent. And Franciszek, as you yep. said uh, at the beginning of your talk, the power of a community, isn't it amazing that we have this event and it's all organized by volunteers? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, give them a, a big applause for all the volunteers and the angels. <laughs> First question. So you mentioned uh, that you, you wanted to try and model it off of something that already existed to make it easier to certify. Is Mike working? Yes, yeah, yeah, just okay. get closer. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, as, as part of kind of making this simple and quick to stand up, modeling it off of, after something that already exists. Yep. Um, have you seen someone else do some similar method here, like a fermentation trailer type of approach? Um, fermentation, okay, I will be honest on this one. I need to do more research on who is doing what. I know there are people like the new wave, which was started by Sandor Katz. You probably know the wild fermentation, art of fermentation. He is the author of the book, and he is the person who is kind of re-fermentizing or fermentizing America. Uh, there are people who got inspired by him and other, uh, others, and they are already touring, for example, United States uh, with similar setup. So I want to get in touch, but honestly, like with the minimal resources which I have now and establishing myself in Normandy, I had to put this on aside. So I am not in a direct touch yet with people who are actually making this happen already in the States. In Europe, I am not aware of uh, yet about kind of project like this because also the fermentation kind of, oh sorry, fermentation, the food trucks, food trailers, they are kind of like old but also a new thing. It's now getting popular and more and more things happening, but I am personally not in touch with them. I do have experience, for example, when I was trying to get kombucha certified in Korea, which was not happening because it was uh, like kombucha was not existing in Korea as a legal thing. We try start to touch on it, you know, where actually to go, where to ask, okay, can I sell this? Can I produce it? It was very complicated and nobody would be like, you know, like wanting to really get in that because it's complicated. It's not being done. So both for the fermentation trailer uh, and what you want to do in it, what you want to do in it will be more easy because uh, like the beer, ciders, you know, uh, kimchi, uh, kefir, it's being made in EU. So like, you know, at least in the like, United States EU, this would be, I think, quite pretty simple because you can use all the samples, things which are being done legally. The problem would be, or like, you know, the uh, 
technical thing, maybe the fermentation trailer, but in this case, I may really try to hide, for example, uh, behind sauerkraut. Okay, this is a fermentation cabbage, you know, like, you know, down, you know, in this place, you know, this is the fridge, you know, this is my cutting board, you know. We will see, you know, like, till I start to really progress on this, and that means I need to prepare, I cannot say directly. Did I answer the question? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thank you. Next, please. I hope that you know we will discuss. You know we don't have so much time, and uh, of course, if uh, you know after that you can come to Furekin Base. Uh, we are set, you know, in a Lishko field, uh, but there is a sign. You know, you will find it quite easily, I think, and we can discuss later on, especially in the evening. You know more. Yes. Uh, at home, I started uh, with fermentation uh, lemonades, making lemonades, and yep. for a year now, and uh, quite easily. Uh, uh, I can produce uh, lemonades for uh, vegetarian restaurants in uh, my city. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but uh, what are the problems? I have no certification. I do it in my kitchen. Uh, yeah. Get closer to the mic. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I do it in my kitchen and uh, uh, it's just hom homemade. Yeah. I have no problems with uh, selling them to the mm -hmm. restaurants, but. What are the risicos? Uh, can you do you know something about that? Yeah, I have been through this many times. Like for example, again in Korea, I could get uh, like it's always this is the thing you know like you know you can be in that kind of gray zone. Uh, like uh, we could, for example, produce, uh, okay, we had a small restaurant, so I could produce uh, drinks, uh, like, you know, in my fermentation facility, which I built up for this purpose, which was nice for me, like useful. Uh, I could sell them in my uh, establishment. I could go, for example, for a small markets. Uh, like, you know, like places where you can really sell for some period of time. Later on, they prohibited, by the way, on the island. So people who are going doing this and they don't have a le legal certification, big problem. I couldn't sell them in supermarkets. I couldn't sell them really in the bars and restaurants uh, because uh, they kind of uh, reasonably ask, okay, so can you show me just, you know, the legal stem that this is a hygienically safe, you know, and this is certified. Because if something happened uh, to the customer and they would say, yeah, this drink is from... You know, like, you know, we don't know actually. It will be them who would be responsible. And uh, the thing is, like, there are a few things. One is that somebody gets sick. Uh, like, you know, it can happen. You know, like, you know, it shouldn't, but, you know, it could in theory. Uh, or they can get, of course, uh, sick after something else, but they can claim it was you. So that's one. Uh, second, uh, as I mentioned with your lemonade, if they are fermented, it can explode. And this happens several times to me. It's not so much that, you know, I would, for example, make the uh, fermented beverage wrongly, but people do not treat it properly. And if you have a fermented drink, which is live, and you let it, you know, at 40 degrees somewhere, like, you know, it will continue fermenting. If it's glass bottle, you can find later on the sharpness, you know, in your ceiling or body. And you don't want that. So if they are friendly towards you, it's very good. The question is how far you would be able to go. And if there is, like, you know, it may get complicated. If you can do, you know, like, you know, exchange like this, it's great. There are many places which are actually completely going around. Like in Korea, for example, we could get our drinks out on the internet. You know, if it was not too big production, legally we could sell it through the internet. Uh, I'm quite sure you could make some deliveries like through the, you know, like the really like the box, like you know, the farmers do, you know, with veggies. You could do a similar thing like that, you know, with the drinks. But if you get certification, like it's more easy because also you would be able to get uh, the insurance. I really don't like the insurance, but if things go wrong, it can be a huge difference because if something happened to someone and it's kind of like, you know, losing eye or something, you know, it can be something what, to my experience, can be really, really heavy financial kind of, you know, constraint for many, many years because, you know, you have to reimburse. I hope it doesn't happen. Uh, but it's one of these stresses which I definitely would like to avoid. Uh, of course, like first you want to technologically avoid it so it doesn't happen. Uh, but uh, if it does, unfortunately, because of whatever reason, it's good to have a chance to be at least partly protected. But thank you for the info, you know, concerning this, you know, being able to produce and get it out without, like, with friendly approach from the locals, that's important. One of the problems is also that you, 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 have produ you produce it and then the time when it becomes consumed, yeah, must be uh, not too long. And, uh, Sorry, once more. The, uh, time? Yeah, the time to producing and uh, consuming uh, yeah. must be not too, not too long time. Uh, That's specific uh, for yeah. probiotic yeah, drinks, yeah. Uh, for example. Like you know, if you want to have them effective and really kind of working uh, 
well that they are still like, contributing probiotically to your gut. It's few weeks, month, two, but after it's very delicious drinks, they are still nice but not so active and you need to keep them refrigerated, which is uh, quite a high cost. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Next, please. Do we have still next? More questions. Or? Yeah, you have yeah. maybe two, three more minutes. Okay. Two, three minutes. So that's one so more question. So hurry up. Uh, a short question. You're running out of time. And if you want to contribute to this event as an angel, please go <laughs> to the info tent and register yourself. We need a lot of helping angels. Especially for the teardown. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so um, have you heard anything about uh, a contract brewing kind of fermenting? So I know like uh, with beer, there's the contract brewing side, but is there yeah. anything from a, from a fermentation side, so using someone else's certified equipment yeah, yeah, to yeah. do what you want to do? Uh, I have heard about that. Well, it depends what you want to do. Like for me, like, you know, I really want to brew, which means, you know, I want to brew myself. I have seen the system and again, like my last experience is Korea. There were businesses which are starting completely like that. Some of them actually are saying directly, okay, we brew somewhere else. Some of them kind of been hiding of yeah, brewery, but actually somebody else brew for them. Uh, there were loads of problems, especially in Korea, because uh, the quality of production was basically going completely from you know, like, you know, like good, bad, you know, and you couldn't do too much about that. It was actually suggested to us several times let's get some you know kind of someone to make the drinks for you uh, but especially in the environment in Korea in that time I didn't want to do it because uh, I knew that I'm doing essentially something very very special and new in the field and I wanted to have a chance not to become rich but become established and being able to use the resources you know from this kind of being on the edge to continue doing stuff which I like and I was, I think, very rightly worried that, you know, they would basically steal it from you very quickly. Technology like that. It's a different thing if you are in a place where already these things are established. Like, I think Europe would be much safer. And it's one of the options how you could actually start really getting uh, your products through the another facility which is certified. Uh, there's an interesting place, for example, in San Francisco. It was in 2010. I was there last time. There was an interesting place called Underground Market. You could come there and without be being certified, you could actually sell your product. Uh, the trick was that you have to pay, I think, two euros or two dollars, you know, by the entrance saying, if anything happens to me, it's fine. It was prohibited within like three, four months because it was illegal. Uh, but they managed actually later on to get more than $100,000 in a crowdsourcing uh, campaign. And they established a big kind of, you know, uh, community kitchen where you could uh, actually rent a place in a legally certified kitchen and do your production on very limited kind of cost. The renting was kind of as cheap as possible and you could actually legally produce your things. So there was another kind of, there are many ways, you know, how to sneak around. Uh, but uh, one of the most easy ones, and this is the reason why I present the fermentation mobile, is having your own spot because if you can get for five, six thousand euros, a place where you can do the stuff uh, compared to the like we are talking, even if you lease the place, which is difficult, if you don't have the connections to really be safe that you can for five, six, seven years doing something, do something somewhere and they don't kick you out and you have five, six, years, seven years to do it, you still talk, they talk about 10, 15, uh, 10, 15,000 euros for reconstructions generally and the certifications. If you want to buy like 40, 50, 60,000 euros minimum, these things you can get. You can get to the position when you do it. But fermentation mobile is more designed like the first two, three years, which are hardest to make them as short as possible that you get as quickly as possible to the uh, position that you are getting as much resources which if, if, uh, as you need from doing these things with using this setup. And after, of course, after two, three years, because you are building your history both legally and in the community, you can run crowdsourcing campaign, you can appro uh, apply for the grants because you can just already say, I am just enlarging, I need a more permanent location. And that's kind of the way which I suggest, but this kind of brewing, you know, for example, getting your alcoholic beverage during that time somewhere where you can do it legally, it's an option, definitely. Oh, well, sure. Thank you, Franchitek, yep. and we <laughs> run out of time. Have if you bit. have more questions for him, he's in the food hacking tent, right? Yep, food hacking base, yes. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. A big Bye. applause for him.